I'm Gunther Zeug. I'm here today with Konrad, my colleague and co-founder of uh, Risk Cognition. Uh, just as a short intro, Risk Cognition, who are we? We are a German startup and uh, we have the aim to deliver geospatial data through APIs to developers to allow them in yeah, easy and immediate integration of such data into their applications. So what Matic just presented is um, a classical use case for us. So uh, our business model follows a data as a service approach. However, we learned uh, through our own developments how uh, complex and challenging the backend development uh, is as well to serve such data. So um, we also as a, uh, offer as a second business model backend as a service, allowing uh, other service providers, other data providers to share their data uh, through our technology. So, um, but going back to our uh, pilot and uh, to follow up um, to what Matic has started with. So how does the situation look to us? Yeah, we are on the data side. What, what we understood is that Elmibit, they developed this decision support system to, uh, that is dedicated to winemakers and uh, their customers, the winemakers, they have a, a pain point. They want to improve the irrigation management. And so far, this irrigation management is mainly based through in situ measurements, point measurements um, on the farm, and uh, that is supported then through uh, weather information. Um, so the question that we face now or that, that we discussed together with Matt is, is how can we improve that irrigation management? How can we provide um, aerial information? Um, how can we uh, calibrate that with the point data that is available from the field? And uh, as remote sensing experts, the answer is, of course, through remote sensing, through Earth observation imagery. Next slide. So how does the situation look like today in Europe, but also globally? We have um, really a large amount of data sources. First and foremost, of course, the Sentinels of Copernicus, a very, very valuable, precious data source uh, with, with lots of specific information that you can derive from the spectral information that those um, satellites deliver, having also a very high temporal resolution, having every few days um, a new image of the of your area of interest. Then we have uh, the Copernicus services themselves. They deliver already some ready-made products. We have uh, large initiatives like uh, GEOS and, and EuroGEO. Um, who support the sharing of data. But then we have also um, the private industry. On the one hand, there is this term, the new space, so many startups coming into the business, launching their own satellites, their own platforms, and uh, having usually in mind to cover a specific um, area of interest, a specific um, problem, be it forest fires, be it marine monitoring um, or, or, you know, or, or other applications. And then we have also the big players. We have also Amazon, we have Google, and uh, we have also a few European players who are uh, currently um, offering their services, so-called data and information access services, the DSS. Uh, next, Konrad. Um, and all um, provide their data as, uh, well, there, there is a new term that was coined. It's called analysis-ready data. Uh, that's a very nice term, ARD. And what does it mean? Uh, it means that you provide a satellite data that has been processed to a minimum set of requirements and that it's organized to um, yeah, allow an, immediately, uh, an immediate analysis. That's a very, very nice approach, we think, and we totally support that because uh, yeah, being coming from the remote sense, we know how complex it can be and challenging it can be to really derive something meaning, meaningful out of a pixel from a satellite image. On the other hand, having um, a partner like uh, Matic from Elmibit, we know it does not help them that much to have a satellite image um, that is pre-processed and that allows immediate analysis because they don't have this uh, image processing background. You still need a know-how to 
uh, analyze that data. So we go a step beyond that and we say, hey, we don't, uh, we, we deliver already the derived information from the satellite. And how we did that now in the specific case uh, of eVinyard, uh, Conrad will tell you. Yeah, thanks, Gunther. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely pick up from here because uh, that's something that I always find exciting. Uh, both Gunther and I come from the geography side, the Earth observation side, and we love showing pictures uh, and we love interpreting those pictures. But we're also developers um, and we realize, you know, just how difficult it is to go from this beautiful picture, which, you know, it's shown everywhere. We know it from Google Earth. We know it from so many different places now, but they're generally just pictures. Um, and coming back to the very pragmatic point that uh, Matic had said, well, farmers, you know, they love pictures too, but they also know their field very well. And what the, the information they're looking for is really to pertain to what they're doing every day and not just necessarily pictures. Going just a bit further from that, um, I, I'm sure you realize uh, we're looking actually at Copernicus Sentinel-2 images here, um, but try showing, you know, Sentinel-1 pictures to people and, and sort of showing, hey, look how great this looks. Well, people don't get as excited about it. Uh, on the one hand, they may not even understand what they're seeing or why things look like that, even though they may understand um you know the the location and uh, uh so our job here really is to take advantage of those sentinels take advantage of uh eurogeo and the you know sort of the diaz is the services to go to that next level um and and in some cases deliver that dry information that application developers actually want uh so not just the pictures themselves um, and uh, so risk cognition was really there for that. Uh, Gunter and I have been in this business, uh, so the EO business for quite some time. And that's what we always found so frustrating is, well, you've got these beautiful pictures, why aren't you using them? Um, and that's why we're starting to see that it's not just about the pictures, it's really about linking and, and providing the necessary data and information uh, that the users want. Uh, and in this case, it's the application developers. Um, you know, uh, Matic and E Vineyard, they are domain experts. They know what the farmers want. They know what they want to deliver as a software company. Um, so what we're trying to do is uh, improve their um, software by providing more information, something that's competitive, uh, and hopefully um, uh, updating and, and making their business better. So um, I'm just showing you the, uh, again, uh, the developer perspective. This is just documentation. How do you access the data? Um, so what we're working with, and uh, that's a big part of this co-design, is A, identifying what potentially uh, could help uh, e Vineyard and the farmers, then going back to our knowledge of the remote sensing domain and building from there the the software uh, and the back end in order to extract exactly those measurements uh, that the that a e vineyard developers can integrate into their um, uh, decision support um, and then move from there because if you look at it from the remote sensing perspective the we would necessarily know how to process the data and deliver it uh, but then you know we um, the, the goal here is actually to remove that challenge and really just bring the, the final bit to, um, uh, to the application developers from an easy, um, uh, well, you know, read the documentation as everyone says. Um, so that's, that's the part we're developing here. Um, and as you can see, if you, if you go to the uh, riskcognition.io website, um, we're literally just documenting our APIs, which are accessing the data through, you know, either the Sentinels, through the Diaz's, or through other um, uh, uh, EO-based uh, information sources, and tailoring them to uh, to what are you know what the developers are looking for. Okay, um, so just a quick um, yeah explanation. 
um, the way we are developing it is through API calls, so application programming interfaces. Um, specifically, uh, this is a REST API. So this is a very well-known um, internet way of sharing data. Uh, I mean, all our mobile phones today, you know, you, you go anywhere on the internet, um, all those applications are using these types of APIs in order to provide you with that information. Uh, a great example is, um, you know, your, your weather apps. In the back end, well, there's huge amounts of processing going on, uh, but all you want to know is, you know, where, what temperature and what is the forecast for where I am. Uh, essentially, that's the direction we want to go with the Earth observation information as well, is be able to allow the application developer to decide, you know, what are the different um, inputs we're looking for and how can I easily access them? And uh, this is uh, exactly the best way. Uh, all we're showing here is just the points that you would receive in the API call. Um, and we're just using, uh, you know, off the shelf sort of... Uh, uh, chart producing um, result in order to demonstrate that, you know, uh, you can go on our uh, website and, and do this yourself. Uh, then as Matic was, uh, has shown as well, he's integrating exactly the same calls, but into his decision support system. Um, and this is where the, um, well, the building of the services, both from Matic's side and Evinyard's side, as well as our side, uh, and the co um, um, the co well development is happening is to we need to make sure that we're delivering the correct data. Um, e Vineyard also needs to understand what we're delivering to them and how they can integrate it into their decision support. So on the one hand here, um, as everybody knows, the NDVI is a, a very valuable. Uh, way of, of monitoring vegetation. So this, of course, was the first natural way uh, forward with e Vineyard. Um, I would say the next one is to go to the next level, EO, um, and that is to really cooperate more with what the farmer has, the information potentially that the farmer can provide. Uh, in this case, we're looking at uh, the fact that a lot of uh, e Vineyard customers have uh, soil moisture measurements, in situ moisture measurements, uh, which they would like to see whether it's possible to extend over the entire field. Now here, there's a bit more uh, processing because on the one hand, the farmer would need to share with us um, that kind of information so that we can begin actually calibrating the earth observation imagery that we're receiving and pushing that to the, uh, to the customer, so here e Vineyard, and then e Vineyard will need to understand how best to integrate that into the decision support as well. So there's already a, 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 quite a number of steps. It's um, you know, coming from pretty images to actually um, taking advantage of the EO uh, data itself. There's gonna be a lot of you know, coming back and forth uh, because again, uh, if the farmer comes back to us and says, well, you know, it's not giving me any more information, then obviously they won't be willing to pay for that. So we still need to fine tune it and make sure that um, the, the products and services we're developing um, are, are yeah, going to be interesting to the farmer and they will want to uh, take advantage of that. Um, so yeah, that's that's currently where we are right now. So going to the next level and and sharing both uh, data coming from the farmer as well as uh, from the uh, earth observations, uh, and that I think is again where this API approach to developing applications uh, comes into play. Uh, again, another great example of that is um, you know how Google Maps works. You know. It, uh, you, know the, you know the location you are, you say where you want to go, and that information then gets uh, sent to the servers and comes back with your you know, best routes. This is again the way we are trying to develop our risk cognition APIs. So um, where are we going from here? Um, the delivery of services uh, requires significant backend development. 
So as I keep writing, um, there are plenty of places to um, get EO uh, data today. Um, you know, Gunter mentioned the ARD. That is analysis ready data. And uh, from my perspective, that is great for you know, research because we know that the same data is coming back um, and it's going to be processed to a certain level. It's great for us because that is the starting point. If we do not need to be processing again, uh, earth observation imagery, uh, we're ready to go to the next level and deliver you know, the services to eVineyard. So that's definitely the, the, the way to move forward. However, there still are the backend uh, to deliver the APIs uh, to our customers. Um, and that's where this uh, data as a service business model for application uh, developers. Uh, people are willing to pay for data, uh, but they need to be able to access it in a way that, you know, that um, augments their services as well. Uh, so that's the type of uh, business model that risk cognition is moving into. Um, and the, well, it, uh, you, the last point here is the European Green Deal. It was mentioned also by a uh, uh, previous presenter. EO is a very big part of that. Um, and it's not the only component. When we think of uh, Green Deal, it's not uh, the farmer they are usually concentrating on their field. However, through the CAP, through other um, um, uh, themes, we also need to know, you know, how close are we, for example, to water sources, um, uh, you know, monitoring, you know, the, the forest next door. Uh, all those things begin to uh, be integrated as part of the Green Deal. And therefore, this type of API service can um, do that at the back end and deliver just the data again to the customers that they need in order to make the right decisions um, and help them sort of become more environmental um, and more in line, for example, with the new cap, uh, because those are also going to change depending on the country. It's not going to be the same everywhere. Um, uh, another, another point here as well, uh, as Gunther mentioned, there's a lot of EO startups. Um, so it's, uh, you know, that, that whole community, that earth observation community is getting bigger and bigger. Um, and so we can see here as a, as a company that we can deliver the EO data uh, rather than the startups uh, focusing on that part of their business, they can focus on, you know, the, the types of data building the satellites and, and deploying them based on their customer needs. Uh, and finally, of course, uh, AI applications. Um, um, although we certainly have AI working in our backend, uh, the data that AI requires in order to make decisions has to come from somewhere. And so through this API type of um, um, solution, uh, other developers can integrate our EO information into their AI applications as well. Um, Gunther, is there anything else you wanted to sort of add here maybe? No, I think that's a nice comprehensive overview, thanks. Perfect. So uh, just to finish on that, uh, please check out our services. Um, and even more importantly, uh, we definitely would love to hear your uh, data needs and, and feedback if you have any. So I'll finish there. Thank you very much.